divine grace, you're keeping grace. You're enabling, empowering grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you for it today. In Jesus' name. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. Many of you know if you've listened to us preach very long, you know we're about as untraditional as we can get. So I don't have a traditional word. If you want a traditional one, I just gave it to you earlier. But it being three weeks after Jesus was raised from the dead, literally three weeks ago we celebrated he lives. Amen. Because he lives. And in light of that, in revelation of him being risen, this week I began to reflect and trying to bring something into line with today being Mother's Day. I believe I heard from the Holy Ghost. Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 He's talking about how Jesus, after he was raised from the dead, revealed himself to Caiaphas, revealed himself uh, to the twelve, talking about the disciples, revealed himself to five hundred brethren at once, and he talks about how he revealed himself to James and some of the other apostles. And Paul then in verse 9 says he's least of the apostles. He talks about Jesus showing himself to him. So he is saying, I seen him too. But he said, I'm the least of the apostles because... I was murdering the saints. I was persecuting the people of God, but yet he had mercy on me. He had bestowed grace on me. And in verses 10, this is what he talks about. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 10. But by the grace of God. Someone say the grace of God. Grace, grace here is a Greek name that is pronounced charis. It's from what we get the word charismatic from. Charisma from you ever heard charisma? That person's got charisma. Charisma means they're gifted, they're charismatic. A man simply means they believe in the gifts of the spirit, or it just means gifted. Somebody say gifted. Yeah. Amen. Lord, charis. Amen. From where we get the word charisma. Somebody say charis. Muth. Charisma. Gifted. Amen. Somebody say gifted. Muth. Gifted mom. Praise God. That's what I always call my mom. I said it more appropriately today. Amen. But a lot of times growing up I say mom. Amen. Praise the Lord God. So somebody say a gifted mom. Amen. Amen. Charis or charisma. Or charisma. Amen. Praise God. The gifted one. But the grace of God or the gift of God. Amen. Listen to what it said. But by the grace or the gift of God I am what I am. And his grace, this gift, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Somebody shout, it was not in vain. Amen. But I labored more abundantly than they all. He's talking about all the people Jesus had revealed himself to. Paul just said, I'm the least of them, but he said, I've labored more than any of them. Notice he didn't say, I've just worked for more. How many understand work and labor sometimes mean the same thing? But how many understand, especially mothers, Labor's a little bit different than work. It goes into a whole other dimension. Because you can go to work and not be in pain, but you can't... Come on, somebody. But you can't experience labor without some pain. It, 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 it becomes painful. Come on, somebody. Grievance. It hurts. So when Paul says, but I labor, he's not just talking about, oh, I did some work by the Lord. Lord of God. No, he's talking about, man, I have suffered. I have labored. I have hurt. I have went through pain. More abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace or the gift of God which was in me. The word grace here also don't just mean the gift, amen, but, or, or charismatic or charisma, the gifted, but it also means the favor. Somebody say the favor of God. Amen. And he has called it the unmerited favor of God. We're saved by grace. Come on, somebody. Through faith is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. Look at your neighbor and say, before you get puffed up, you didn't save yourself. Just get, that's, amen. A lot of people get puffed up. They, they think they did something. They think they hung on the cross. Come on, somebody. They think they saved themselves. Titus 3 and 8. The Bible said you didn't save yourselves. You've been saved by the washing of regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout, nobody saves themselves. You can't do enough of good to get right with God. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's a gift. It's the gift of God. Jesus is, amen, this grace. For God said in his word in John chapter 1 in verses 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. 
grace and truth. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the unmerited favor of God. I don't deserve forgiven, but Jesus died for me. And if I believe on him and repent of my sins, come on somebody. Yeah. This gift will be bestowed on me. Paul said, I'm the least of all the apostles. I'm the least. Why would he even want to show himself to me? I don't deserve it. If anybody's a worm and unworthy, it should have been me. But he chose me even though I killed Christians. Even though I murdered his followers. He bestowed this grace on me. So when you look at me and say, oh, look what a preacher he is. Look what a mighty man he is. Paul said, let me remind you, it's by the grace of God I this grace. He said, with the grace of God which was with me. He's not just talking about forgiveness of sins. He's talking about the power of God. He's talking about a power and enabling and anointing from God that he don't even deserve to have on his life. It's on him. It's gifted him to do what he's doing. Hello? I don't know how I do what I do. Hello? I mean, when years ago, Back in 09, I, I, I never finished school, so as an example to some of our older sons at the time, I said, well, I'm going to go back and finish school. So I went back to do my GED stuff, and it inspired them, I guess, to do it too, and anyhow, they actually passed all the stuff before I did, but anyhow, I scored college credits. But I failed the math, because I do more adding and multiplying than I do anything. Because you can give me a hundred dollars before I get home, I'll be counted by 120. I always add it to myself. I always multiply something. I had to get it into the hands of my wife. And she's expert when it comes to math, but when it comes to spelling and reading stuff, she's always asking me stuff. You know? That's my strength on that side. And in all most uh, 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 subjects, man, I scored way up. It blew my mind. I'm like college credit. I scored so high on some of that stuff. The teachers told me, said, you're to become a teacher. I said, already? You do what you teach. The Bible. But I said, let me just give you more than I'll do more preaching than anything. Oh, preacher. Yeah. Preacher rhymes with teacher because that's what a preacher is. Come on, somebody. But I didn't get this down. Come on, somebody. I didn't get this down there. Hey, man, glory to God at cemetery. I mean, seminary. We got some preachers today. That's what they resemble is a cemetery. Because everything they know, they got it seminary. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Day is what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. I've had people say, boy, you need to learn how to preach. I said, no, the day I do, they don't need him. Come on, I feel like the mule come on that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on, on Palm Sunday. Come on, that we celebrated about a month ago. Come on, church. I just feel like that old stubborn mule at one time that was stubborn, but now is yielded. Come on, somebody. Amen. Saddle me, Jesus. I carry you where you want to go. Just do some talking, and sometimes I feel like Balaam's ass. He uses my mouth, too, and it don't sound he all when it comes out. something you learn. This ain't taught, it's cold. Amen. Anybody hear the Holy Ghost? And Paul's trying to identify with the people that's titled him as a prince of preachers. And he's saying, y'all just watching me do what I don't know how to do. Because it's his grace. It's his anointing. It's his power. It's his favor. Zechariah 4 and 6 said it's not by might. Grace. 
we hear grace, we'll just think about forgiveness and mercy. Undeserved. No, it's talking about power and anointing. Likewise, undeserved. Hello. I walk in this room today and I've, I've, I've had people, amen, come up to me, especially in the past. And, and I had one lady one time come up and she was trying to pay respects. And she said, Boy, you got it all together. I said, whoa, she was just going to shake my hand and go by. She said, boy, you got it all together. It just comes out. So, And she started going on by. She said, wait, 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 let me stop. I said, that's just the opposite of what I got. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a long foot of ride and I ain't in the driver's seat. I said, God, I know what you told me. But I have no way in this world of knowing at this point how in the world where we how we're gonna go. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. That's what Paul's talking about. Look at your neighbor and say, You didn't save yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, You can't keep yourself. Look at your neighbor and say, You can't anoint yourself. Look at him and say, You don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But he's entrusted you with it. I heard the Holy Ghost this morning I was praying and he stopped me in the middle of prayer he said you don't even know it and this is coming to my spirit I looked at God he said you don't even know it but you're praying because you think if you'll pray this way this morning I'll anoint you for this service this morning he said I anointed you for this service the day I called you Now there is sacrifice. Come on, somebody. But he said, even when you're sacrificially praying, it's said to me, you're not earning nothing. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I was that old shy little of a guy, toothpick with hair, more hair than body. As a teenager, I wouldn't carry on, amen, a sentence with anybody. I was very shy, timid. Hanging my hair over my head. Come on, somebody. Now, when I got behind the drums, I, you knew I was in the room, so still do. But, but, but anyhow, I, I uh, just wasn't really outgoing when it come to that. If somebody told me back then, you're going to preach, I thought, man, there's some fruit loops. Somebody get a bowl and a spoon and bring some milk to that purchase. Man, they done lost their mind. They crazy. Somebody shout, it's the grace of God. It's the gift of God. Friend, when God calls you, He graces you. When God calls you, He anoints you. He gifts you. Come on, somebody. And the more people you put in front of me, the more comfortable I get. Just the opposite of my nature that I was born with. One-on-one, on one, I'm a little bit more trimmed. I'm not like uh, the evangelist called Philip in the Bible. He would one-on-one -on -one with people. Come on, somebody. I'm more like, hey amen, I feel like I'm in a recliner. The more people's in the crowd, the more comfortable I am. Come on, that don't make no sense because that's the opposite of my nature. Before this anointing, come on, before this grace. Somebody ought to look at your neighbor and say, you ought to just let grace take its place today. You, 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 you ought to just turn loose and, hey amen, is he that called you and shall also do it. Somebody say faithful is he that called me and he'll also do it. That's not a thing God called you to do is to let him do it. 